Hi everyone, it's Anthony back with another video and today we're actually going to be doing a get ready with me. It's been a couple months since I've done one of these. I keep doing unready videos kind of over and over at least for the past couple of months. So wanted to do a get ready video. Um, let me adjust this just a little bit. Uh, uh. So we're going to go ahead and go through all of the products that I've been using in my AM routine. Um, it's actually fairly simple for me at least. Um, it, I've kind of kept everything down to like kind of my core steps. There is one thing in here that's kind of like an extra that I'm almost done with, but for right now it's um, kept fairly minimal. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. I'm going to be, um, I think I'm going to shave. I haven't decided yet. I probably should. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and shave, but I usually will um, wash my face first, shave, and then rinse really well with water before moving on to the rest of my routine. So uh, let's go ahead and wash. And the product that I'm using right now for a morning and PM second step cleanser, so water-based cleanser, is actually from the brand Holy Snails, and it's their Kadi cleanser or Kadi cleanser. I'm not sure which way you pronounce that, but I believe it's the Kadi cleanser. And so this is a really straightforward, no muss, no fuss, pump style foam cleanser. And this uses coconut based surfactants. There's some rose water in here. Aloe vera is in here. A bit of lavender water, hydrolyzed silk protein, willow bark extract in here, citrus, citric acid. And so it's a really basic kind of no-nonsense cleanser that just does a really nice job of gently yet thoroughly cleansing and then afterwards it doesn't really feel stripped on your skin if anything my skin feels kind of like hydrated a little bit dewy afterwards so i've been very very happy with this cleanser um, i like that they did the lavender waters and the rose waters as opposed to essential oils in the mix that can um those waters can still potentially pose some risk of irritation but from what I've experienced on my own skin and kind of what I've read is those um, those components of those essential oils are um, that cause that irritation are a lot less pronounced in something like a water or even an extract. So I haven't had any issues with it where I have had issues with other um, heavily essential oil based cleansers in the past. So my skin seems to be doing really, really well with it. Um, but yeah, let's, um, let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to dampen my hands and my face just so we can start applying it. And I really did like just wake up to do this morning routine. I did pop some of my clothes in the washer, but I literally like hobbled over, put those in the washer, hit the start button, and then I was like, I, I, I have my computer back so I can start using my camera and my lighting setup. And so I was like, I gotta start doing that again. And I've been kind of uh, a little bit lazy over the holiday, a Thanksgiving weekend. So I'm like, I have to at least get a couple videos recorded. So I'm like, okay, maybe I should have made coffee, but we're just going for it. Um, so. This is a pump style cleanser. I like to do two pumps of this product. Let's see if we can get that, there we go. So one and two. You could probably get away with one, but I like a really nice luxurious lather and it comes out already pre-lathered. So you just go ahead and apply. And the scent of this product isn't really rose. It isn't really lavender. Maybe you get a little hint of that rose. It actually kind of reminds me of the herbivore um, pink cloud creamy jelly cleanser that I had just been using as far as the scent which that used I believe that used uh, rose water as well or they called it like a rose hydrosol um, and the scent is just kind of basic it just kind of smells like a face cleanser with maybe just a touch of rose and in the herbivore product I kind of complained about that because I was like that they make, they play up this whole like rose part of it and how it has that like kind of pink kind of creamy look to it and I was like I was kind of bummed because you the product looks so nice and kind of like high end quote unquote that I was kind of expecting that rose to maybe come through a little bit more and I don't know I was expecting more of an experience let's just say that like kind of a, a sensorial experience but it didn't have that it was just kind of like basic 
cleanser, which will be fine for a lot of people because, you know, a lot of people aren't focused on the scents, and neither am I to a, to a certain extent, but I was just expecting something a little bit more. But with this, it's kind of sold as a come one, come all, everyone's welcome kind of cleanser. This isn't going to be particularly, you know, irritating. It's not going to be uncomfortable for some people. It really just is a kind of baseline cleanser to get a thorough cleanse, yet a gentle cleanse. So there, you know, it isn't this like incredible texture. It isn't this like amazing looking kind of glittery, cloudy, you know, product in a glass bottle. It's just kind of like, let's cleanse your skin and let's do it right. And so this kind of soapy with just a tiny touch of rose, I almost don't mind it here because it's not geared towards doing any, you know, much else. So it's, it's interesting because I have different opinions even though they kind of smell the same. Um, this has more of like that watery kind of feel that you get from these pump style cleansers as opposed to like really working up a dense lather. This kind of does break down and you have to kind of add a little bit more water to keep it going. But it's not too bad. It does maintain that foaminess, that slip and slide. I feel like it can get a nice thorough cleanse. So anyway, let's go ahead and rinse this. All right. Just gonna pat dry with just a one-time use or just a, a towel that I wash and uh, put in a drawer. So I only dab with them one time or pat dry with them one time before I move on to another one. So that'll go in the laundry bin. Um, okay, so. I'm gonna go ahead and shave, and I'm not gonna force you to sit through that, but I will show you which um, shaving cream I'm using right now. I'm using the Goodfellow um, Moroccan Mint and Cedar uh, Shave Cream. So there's that. Um, I picked this up from Target, and I was actually a little bit surprised because it has olive fruit oil, jojoba, oat bran in it, um, like some more what I would assume are kind of emollient, deeply hydrating kind of nourishing ingredients. There is um, orange peel extract in here, rosemary leaf extract, um, and then it does have, I believe there is added fragrance here as well. It has kind of this like musky kind of um, woodsy scent with a little bit of a mint scent, um, but I don't mind it. And so far I've been liking it. It's more of a kind of thin style shaving uh, cream that you kind of don't even work into a lather and almost just feels like a lotion on the skin and then you shave with it. So I've been happy with it so far. I've been using this for quite some time. I think I'm on like month three and I'm down to about here. So I'll be uh, trying out something new probably here in the next few weeks. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use this. Um, I use the Harry's brand razor and um, that's that. So let me go ahead and do that and then I will be right back with you. Bye. All right, so we are back. I shaved, brushed my teeth, um, kind of paced around a little bit as I was brushing my teeth, but um, we're back. I popped on my shirt that I'm gonna wear for the day because um, everything else that we're gonna be using is just kind of apply leave-on products. So no more rinsing, no more mess with water, that type of thing. So let's jump right into what we're using next. And I'm using the Sulwasu First Care Activating Serum. Beautiful bottle. I've been I've been liking this product. It is quite pricey. Um, I mentioned it, I believe, in last month's Get Unready With Me. So it has been in my routine for quite some time because this is their like deluxe size. I think this is 90 milliliters. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like three times the size of a normal serum. And it features a lot of traditional uh, medicinal hanbang ingredients that are supposed to help reduce inflammation and retain hydration. And essentially, it's a really nice, almost kind of like a first treatment essence, but in a serum form to help boost hydration, allow the products in the rest of your routine to absorb better, give you kind of a nice dewy glow. And it does all of those things. For me, I, I like this product. However, it is really pricey. I think I paid, um, I think just over $100 for this deluxe size. I think their smaller size is 60 milliliters around that price. Um, I'll put links to the products below. Um, and I think that one's like $80. So either way you slice it, it is a pricey serum. And even though it does the things, um, so I'm gonna use a couple pumps. Um, so that's what it looks like. Yeah, I've shown this before. Um, and then I just pat that in. 
And it has kind of a little bit of that herbal kind of scent, but it also has an alcohol kind of scent because there is um, alcohol in this formulation. So keep that in mind. I might do another pump just to get my neck. Dries down nicely and does leave my skin feeling kind of hydrated, but I see more benefit from it as I apply my other products. Like it really does help to get the products to absorb. I end up always end up with like a nice dewy glow after I use it. It's a good prep step, but I just don't know if I would continue spending that much money on it for the benefit. There's been days where I pulled it out of my routine to see if I missed it, even going like a three or four day stretch without it in my routine just to see if I missed it. And I did notice that my products didn't like just absorb and meld with my skin or meld with that product as nicely and give me that kind of, I don't know, it just kind of sets all your products in a really nice way and gets them to absorb nicely. Um, I didn't, it didn't happen as immediately or as kind of um, elegantly, you know, my routine just didn't feel as elegant without that product, but it wasn't like a game changing deal breaking, like I must have this serum. It's nice to have and it gives a nice result, but it's just an extra step in my routine. Like I wouldn't normally have a first, a first serum. I'd usually go for a first treatment essence or I really would like to start incorporating a, incorporating an AM serum, like a vitamin C serum back into my routine to help with hyperpigmentation, but I just can't justify having yet another step in my routine. This is already, I think, seven steps without sunscreen, so we would be up to eight, and then if I added a first treatment essence, it would be nine, and then that's not even considering maybe a morning wash-off mask that I would use or sheet mask, so then we're talking about 10, 11 steps in my morning routine. So this is just kind of an extra step. It is very nice. I do quite like it, but I don't think I would come back to it. Who knows, though, once I finish this up, um, and then I end up going like a month, two months without it. Maybe I'll have a better idea of if I truly miss it or not, but cutting it out of my routine for three, four days wasn't that big of a deal breaker for me. So, so yeah, I've got quite a bit left in here. So I probably have another month of this. Maybe, um, I might start decanting it and letting some friends try it just so I can move on to something else. But, uh, for now I'm going to finish it up. And then that's that. I don't necessarily think that I'm going to be coming back to this. However, if you're looking for adding like an extra step of kind of luxury into your routine or your skin has a hard time absorbing products really, really well, or you're looking for a really nice prepping step to start your routine off with a nice hydrated um, canvas, this is a, a fairly decent product to go for and one that I don't know if I'd there, there's got to be something else that's cheaper, but if you're looking to splurge, this is this is a nice product. So I'll just say that. Moving on to my toner step, right now I'm using the Face Story Artemisia 50% Artemisia Extract Pore Refining Toner Mist. So I just started using this fairly recently. I think it's been about a week or so. Um, pretty much since the Face Story unboxing came out, I started using this toner that night. So whatever day that was, it was it was last week at some point, I believe. And this is a fairly watery toner, but it's got a little bit of weight to it. You can see that when you shake it up, it does hold on to those bubbles pretty well. It's got just a little bit of weight, so it's not 100% completely thin water toner. It's got a little bit of that weight to it. Um, so in here we have, I don't even know if the ingredients are on here. Um, it's got 50% artemisia extract in it. It also, it ha I believe it's like glycerin based. There might even be tea tree in here. Let me check. Artemisia water is number one, 50% glycerin, niacinamide, adenosines in here, calendula. You've got peppermint leaf extract, thyme extract, feverfew, daisy flower, sage leaf extract, nettle extract, honeysuckle extract green tea flower extract um, in here as well. So a lot of kind of floral herbal extracts, no um, essential oils in here or synthetic fragrance. However, some of those extracts can act as um, fragrance providers, but I haven't had any issues, haven't seen any reaction to this product, which is nice. So um, it comes with a little pump spray 
uh, applicator. It also has a regular cap so you can just like dump it out. But I have been really enjoying the spray. Um, I think that, I don't know if it like, I just like the spray. I feel like when I apply it as a spray into my hand, it has the little bubbles and it just absorbs a little bit nicer. And that might totally be in my head, but I like that application. If you remember, I had one of my toners previously in a bubble pump bottle and this kind of has that same effect of kind of adding that the bubbles and the air into the toner and I feel like it just applies a little bit better. So I have been doing just like three pumps of this and you can see it kind of holds its weight onto my hand and then I'll pat. No scent to this really. Um, there might be just a touch of that um, herbal scent from the different extracts in the Artemisia, but really it's super minimal. Um, and then I just continue, continue to layer this product until my skin is kind of sufficiently dewy, really, really hydrated. That usually takes about four applications, three sprays each. Um, every person will be different as to what their needs are and the, the finish they're going for, but I go for the like drenched kind of feel. Um, especially in the winter time when it starts to get super dry, I tend to really pack on um, layer watery, layerable hydration, and then seal it in with a nice moisturizer. Ah, uh, pat, pat, pat. Okay, so that's that for the toner. I like it. It's nicely hydrating. Um, it's not as as deeply in it or like incredibly hydrating as some other toners that I've used um, or essences that I've used. It's kind of um, a good all around and layerable uh, toner. So if you need more, you just do that. You know, if you have extra dry skin, you might end up doing that six or seven times to do that full like seven skin method. But I found like four is enough for me. Um, so it's nice and layerable. It never feels oily or sticky or tacky, um, and it, it really does absorb nicely while still leaving a dewy finish. So it's a nice kind of classic style toner, maybe in the vein of like the Clear Supple Preparation Toner, the Rovectin Toner, it's more lightweight than that. So if those were too heavy for you, um, this might be a nice middle ground. Um, and the Artemisia extract does help to reduce inflammation, calm ir um, irritation and redness. So I like that it has that balancing quality as well. And I think, did I mention? Yeah, so the niacinamide, once again, assisting with redness, helping to um, up that glow factor. So this is a really nice, well-formulated kind of soothing, hydrating with mild brightening uh, power toner. And the texture is kind of this nice middle ground. So I feel like Face Story, this is the first um, Face Story branded product that I've ever used and from their kind of in-house curations. So I am very impressed. It seems like they did their homework with this one because um, it. I feel like those with oily skin would really like it because they only have to do a couple layers and it doesn't leave a residue. Those with drier skin can just layer to their heart's content and those with sensitive or irritated skin will like that artemisia or mugwort property to it. So very nice. I don't, I don't believe this is too pricey. I'll put the, um, I'll put the pricing below, but I want to say it's in the $20 range, um, I'll have to list that below, but it didn't like scare me when I saw the cost of it. So this is something that I felt comfortable just like spraying and just patting on until my skin's like bloop, bloop, bloop. So really, really like it so far. I haven't had a ton of time with it, but we'll see how that goes. I'll be doing a full Face Story brand review sometime in the spring. So you'll see individual reviews pop up on my blog as I use their products. And then I'm just gonna save maybe a little bit of it left at the end. So then this spring I can do a full review, show you textures, all that stuff. So be on the lookout for that. Next up is my Essence Step that I'm using. You've seen this before at least once, maybe a couple of times, because this has been in my routine for a long time. And it's the Make Prem uh, Chaga Concentrate Essence. Da -da -da -da. So this is a single extract extract. 
<laughs> this is a single extract, 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 single extract essence that features chaga mushroom. So uh, chaga mushroom, it helps with nourishing the skin. It can help to balance the skin as an adaptogen. So bring down redness and inflammation, or if your skin's looking dull, it helps to kind of bring that um, nourishing hydration and brightening kind of up. It kind of balances out your skin. Um, it also has some um, nice hydrating and antioxidant benefits as well. So I have only been using one or two splashes per application, and you can see even after using this for about, we're coming up on two and a half, maybe even three months, and I'm almost exactly halfway. So this thing lasts a long time. I'm absolutely going to be decanting this and giving it to friends because I have other essences I need to review. I can't use a single product for six months, even though I think that's a great value. You've got 200 milliliters here. Um, I just have other products that I have to review. So um, this might be like one of the last times I use it, but I just do just a splash of the product in my hand. You're not gonna be able to see that, but just a small splash. It has um, this really wonderful earthy herbal scent that I just love. It's kind of like a woodsy scent and it comes from that chaga mushroom and it's just fantastic. And so this product, even though there's no oil or no, um, Sodium hyaluronate, there's no tranexamic acid, I believe that's what it's called. Um, even though there's none of that, it gives this nice kind of nourishing burst of hydration. There's no oil in it and you're, it gives kind of that glowy kind of sheen. And so I've just been very impressed with this product since I started using it. And that's one of the reasons why, because usually once I hit a month mark with the product, I'll move on to the next one. Um, even if I like it, like I said, I just have products that I want to review and get um, posts out for and all of that stuff. And so I'll, once it hits a month, I usually move on to something else. But with this one, I've just been really enjoying it. And so every time I look at it, I'm like, no, we're going to keep you around for another few days. No, we're going to keep you around for a week. But I think I finally hit the mark where it's just like, you, you have to move on. Otherwise, you're never going to get to any of the other Essence products that you have in your routine. So I really like this. I think those that are looking for mainly brightening from their essences, like you like Secret Key, you like the Misha um, Time Revolution First Treatment Essence, you really like the Neogen, um, what is that? the micro essence, the Neogen micro essence. I think that's what it's called. Um, if you like those galactomyces, like fermented niacinamide packed, oh, the Iopay uh, bio essence would be another one. This probably isn't gonna be your jam because this doesn't have the galactomyces ferment filtrates. It doesn't have a ton of niacinamide in it. This is more about balancing the skin, offering a lot of hydration, a hit of antioxidants for kind of skin support or skin um, skin health, general skin health. Um, and there is a little bit of brightening, but it's more cosmetic. It's just because of that amount of hydration. And it has like a, a light residue, but it's not sticky or tacky, but it leaves a little bit of kind of like a physical sheen to the skin. It isn't, at least for me, it hasn't like boosted or increased brightening um, as much as those first treatment essences do. So something to keep in mind, I I will I would probably come back to this just because it's very, very approachable for my skin. I like the hit of antioxidants and to know that they're there. Um, and it lasts a long time. So even if it wasn't something that I used daily, I might work it into my routine on days when my skin's feeling a little bit dried out, or if I was exposed to the sun too long, or if I was outside and I just wanted a hit of antioxidants just to help with repairing and protection, then I could see myself working this in. But my heart absolutely belongs to brightening essences that have fermented ingredients in them that have niacinamide in them because those do help with my dark spots with my hyperpigmentation especially on my neck and so i've been missing that and between that and skipping out on vitamin c because i've been using that sulwasu as kind of like my am um am serum i really have seen my hyperpigmentation kind of 
um, it's falling back and it's starting to get a little bit darker um, and or at least it's not fading and it's not maintaining I'm starting to know notice some spots pop up especially when I I have some blemishes like I had it's almost gone which is nice but I had a, a pimple right here and it healed with a pretty significant dark spot, looked like a little potato on my forehead, but it's starting to go away. It's still there a little bit, but I wish I had my Galactomyces ferment filtrates. I wish I had my um, vitamin C to help tackle that. And these two products have been in the way of that happening. So I'm kind of ready to move on. So that's that for Essence. Let's talk about serum right now. I'm using the Even Prime Barrier Serum. So I don't think I had gotten a chance to talk about this in my last Unready With Me. Maybe I did. I don't remember. Um, but this is a serum that is focused on uh, protecting the skin barrier, helping to strengthen skin. So it's packed with peptides. It, I do believe this might have some fermented ingredients in it. Um, it's got several different forms of sodium hyaluronate, but it's all about hydrating and supporting skin health. And rather than being something like the Great Barrier Relief uh, from Crave Beauty, which is more of like a lotion consistency and has a lot of oils like tamanu oil, um, this is much more lightweight in a gel format. So I use two pumps per application and you can kind of see it maybe. There it is, yeah. It's got this really, really light lavender color to it. Um, it's almost not no noticeable and it's got zero scent. Um, but it does have a lot of plant and herbal extracts that help with inflammation, um, are supposed to be really powerful antioxidants and um, that those peptides, that peptide complex is going to help to support um, skin barrier, strengthen that, uh, that skin barrier uh, and kind of create a thicker, more resilient skin. And I'd say that maybe I did mention this. I don't remember. Um, I, I'd say that that in combination with my Curology that I use a few times a week, I think I wrote this in the review, um, that in combination with Tretinoin over the past, um, it's been about six weeks six weeks that I've been using this, maybe a bit longer. Uh, my skin has just felt a lot more resilient, almost kind of thick in a way, um, where it just hasn't really been impacted by, like I haven't been hit with bouts of potential overexfoliation. products haven't really been messing with my skin too much, um, everything just seems kind of resilient, like I've built a really good protective wall around my skin. And I haven't really felt that that much until I combined Curology with the Barrier Serum. Like this is a really well thought out and well formulated product. And you get 40 milliliters here, which is a little bit bigger than most serums. So it does last, I've got a bit left. Um, this is another one that I may uh, hold on to the rest of it so I can do the, uh, even Prime brand review episode two, which will be featuring this barrier serum. They also have an eye cream that I'm excited to start working into my routine and they have some blemish patches. So that's gonna be round two of my Even Prime brand review, but this'll this will most likely be the highlight unless that eye cream just blows me away. I've just been very, very happy with the barrier serum. If you were someone that liked Crave Beauty's Great Barrier Relief and what it did for your skin, However, you wish it was more lightweight. If you found that to leave your skin feeling a little bit oily, you might really get along with the Barrier Serum. Serum, So it's one to check out from Even Prime. So there's that. Um, last two in the main routine and then we'll talk sunscreen. I've got the um, uh, Then I Met You Calming Tide Gel Cream. I just took the cap off, but it looks, it's a very interesting packaging. Um, so there's that. Um, this features hibiscus extract, maticasicide, polyglutamic acid, and peptides. So this uh, polyglutamic acid is supposed to be a lot more potent than hyaluronic acid in retaining hydration to the skin. And it's the ingredient that made me fall in love with the uh, giving essence from that I met you. I love, love, love that essence. So um, I was happy to see it in this moisturizer. There's also um, some other hydrating ingredients as well. This does have bergamot oil in it at the very end of the ingredients list, so something to keep in mind. But it's a lightweight gel style uh, face cream or face gel. So let's do it on the back of the hand just so you can kind of see what it looks like. So there's that. So it has a little bit of a drip to it, but it absorbs quite nicely. And 
um, gives my skin a fairly decent amount of hydration. I'd say for the winter time, I kind of maybe picked the wrong time to work this into my routine because it's a little bit too light. As you saw from that gel consistency, it's a little bit too lightweight even for my oily skin in the winter time. I would prefer maybe a little bit of a heavier cream that maybe includes um, some, some additional jojoba or shea butter or something like that just to build that formulation out a little bit, make it a bit more robust. Um, this might be something that I could I could get away with in the a.m. for winter time and then do something heavier in the p.m. like a night cream or something like that, but I'd rather find something that maybe is just a little bit more emollient, a little bit more rich for the winter time for my skin. However, I have been able to kind of counteract that by incorporating a facial oil and adjusting the amount of that facial oil in AM and PM routines, depending on how my skin is feeling, all of that stuff. And the oil that I'm using right now is from Holy Snails and it's their Persid Persides <laughs> oil, facial oil. I tried looking up like, how do I say that? I'm just gonna say Persides. Um, facial oil. So their facial oil um, is kind of a nice blend of a bunch of different oils. If you remember the last one that I was using is the Solved Skincare 100% Jojoba Oil and I do love that oil um, but I was sent this uh, this one from Glowy Co to try because I was kind of talking to the owner of Glowy Co and I was like, I'm loving mixing a, a light or a facial oil with a moisturizer to kind of customize my needs for winter time. And she suggested this one to me and I love Holy Snails. I've loved their shark sauce. We talked about the Cadi cleanser earlier in this routine. This features avocado oil, metafoam, oil, rice bran oil, jojoba oil, evening primrose, macadamia nut oil, squalane, um, blackberry seed, blueberry seed oil, cranberry seed oil, pomegranate, red raspberry, um, sea buckthorn, argon oil, it's got vitamin E, sea buckthorn seed oil, it's got so many awesome oils. Those citrus-based oils um, or the berry oils can help provide a lot of antioxidant, even some brightening power as well. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's a bit darker and it's a bit heavier than the 100% jojoba oil. Um, this blend just has some, it uh, looks like some heavier oils in it. So I've been a little bit less um, generous with using this each day. I've been kind of toning it down. I've only been using it for a few days and then uh, this one I've been using for just about three weeks now. Um, so we're getting close to review time. So what I do is I I can't show it to you by doing this, but I make a little egg in my hand. So I do kind of like a little swirl of the um, moisturizer, just about, I'd say like a quarter sized amount. Um, depending on your skin needs, you might do a little more, a little less. And then I just drop a couple of drops of the oil in my hand. Can you see the little egg? You can kind of see it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I make like a little fried egg in my hand with the oil as the yolk and then I just mix that together and massage it. This oil I've found, um, even though it's heav heavier or uses um, a different blend of oils including jojoba, compared to the Solve Skin Care, I found that it does absorb just a little bit better. Um, not to say that the salt, the salt skin care didn't absorb well, it actually did, but this kind of goes in even faster. Um, and it doesn't give me as much of that glow as the Solve Skin Care one did, but I kind of liked that about the Solve Skin Care product. I love that it kind of gave me, it didn't feel oily or sticky or give me a residue or anything like that or feel slimy or greasy. So I think it was, it's fine for oily skin. But I liked, uh, it gave me just a little bit more of a, a sheen and kind of dewy glow to my skin. So I might adjust how much I use the Persides oil because um, I might want a little bit more out of it. So I might bump it up to three drops in the AM. And then I've been doing four drops in the PM. So that's kind of how I uh, deal with uh, using a moisturizer that might be just a little bit too lightweight for me in the winter time. I would probably still use a facial oil even if I was using something a bit more emollient, but it would be something like 
one drop or two drops as opposed to four or five, those types of things. So, um, but either way, I like the combo. The Then I Met You product still does a good job of helping to retain some hydration. Um, it has the poly the polyglutamic acid in it, which draws some hydration to the skin. I just wish there was something on the back end that was like a little bit more emollient or heavy to seal all of that in. So um, I'll have to dive more into this ingredients list because I, th I think there there is some kind of oil in here. Obviously, I th it might be squalane uh, or jojoba. So there is something there to do that moisture locking, but it just isn't that kind of rich moisturizer that I look for when the winter time hits and all the moisture is just being sucked from my skin. So that's that and that's pretty much the entire kind of AM routine core products outside of sunscreen. Um, it's only seven products but it seems like a lot when we're talking about them all. Um, you could absolutely skip out on the essence you could absolutely skip out on this first serum. Um, that's you know Honestly, it's an extra bonus step that I'm kind of working away from. So you could, I could get this down to five, six steps if needed. If I had a more emollient lotion, I could maybe even skip out on the facial oil, which would bring us down to uh, four or five products. So there's that. And then for sunscreen, I am using a trusty go-to, and that's the Crave Beauty The Beat Shield. I named this my favorite sunscreen of 2019. And I still love it. A friend gave me this bottle because she wasn't a huge fan of it. And so it's been sitting around in my stash and I was like, oh, I better get to that. So, um, you know the drill. This is a lightweight, uh, fairly thin sunscreen. And it's got a lot of antioxidants in it. Um, but other than that, it's just a no-nonsense, straightforward sunscreen. I'm doing my three fingers of sunscreen there and then just dab in. Um, yeah, and then massage it out. And then I'll do a little bit more on my neck and my ears. And then I'll just kind of briefly show you my other SPF products that I use right now. So that is the entire routine. I've always loved the Crave product because it gives a really nice finish. I, sometimes I forget about how nice of kind of like glowy, dewy finish it gives my skin. There's no white cast. It just sinks right in. It's very, very approachable, easy to layer throughout the day. No issues with that either. Um, okay, so we'll do, I just do kind of like a nice dollop on my neck. Do, do, do. I can hear the, the washer tumbler going. I hope you guys can't hear that, but I can hear it. <laughs> it's like, do -do 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 -do. Um, so that's that. We'll get the back of the neck and the ears. I usually do like it another nice dollop and then this time I spread it onto my hands and just kind of get the back of my neck and then my ears. There's that, yay! Um, and then I usually set the timer on my phone for two hours and then I try to consistently reapply throughout the entire day. Um, body sunscreen I'm using right now is the Kula Classic Body Sunscreen SPF 50 Fragrance Free. Um, so I've been using that. I've been using Kula sunscreens for the past like two months straight uh, for the body because of expiration dates. This expires next October and so I, I organize all my sunscreens by when they expire and this is the one that will be expiring next, which sounds like a long ways away, that's 10 months away, but I don't want to accidentally let something slide and then find out that I've got a sunscreen in my stash that has expired. So I just go down the list by when they expire, and this was up next. I had the guava mango one previously, and then I think it was like a tropical coconut one before that. So I've got a couple more of these to get through, and then I can start exploring some new sunscreens. But there's that. And then for my lips, I'm using the Duke Cannon Cannon Balm Offensively Large Lip Balm. It's such a, such a name. <laughs> um, I picked this up because I got um, a little like, not a sponsorship, but I signed up for this thing called Brand Ambassador where you go in and apply to be a brand ambassador for certain products. But 
They don't really, um, one of them did send me something. It was the Lolly Beauty, which um, was from a couple months ago. Um, so they did send me something, but this one with Duke Cannon, it wasn't like they send you anything. They're just like, share on social media stuff that you've bought from uh, Duke Cannon. I'm like, I haven't bought anything from them. So I went to the store and picked up a couple of their products that I thought might work for me. Their brand is still kind of antiquated. It's geared towards a, a men, men's products. That's kind of their whole marketing and their whole vibe. But you dive into their like face washes and body washes, you're still seeing a lot of salicylic acid, a ton of fragrance, you, uh, essential oils, artificial colors. Um, like some of the body washes are like neon orange and like neon blue and stuff. So they're still kind of in that like axe <laughs> body spray kind of realm, at least that's what I see when I look at it. Um, their face sunscreen, however, looked pretty interesting because there was no essential oils. It used a combination of physical and chemical uh, sunscreen filters, and it had some nice ingredients to it, and it was a decent size, but of course, because it had that mineral sunscreen, it left me looking like Casper. Intense white cast. Wasn't a fan of it, so I gave that away. And then um, I picked up this. This is their Cannon Balm Lip Balm because this has all chemical sunscreen filters. It's an SPF 15. It has a lot of nourishing ingredients in it as well. Let me peel this open and just to jog my memory of what's in here. Um, if it'll let me. Maybe not. Okay, we're just gonna have to talk about it when I do the review. Oh wait, no, maybe. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We got it, we got it. Um, it's got calendula extract in it, coconut oil, matcha tea, it's got uh, peppermint essential oil, eh, shea butter in it, uh, sunflower oil, tamanu oil, and vitamin E. So it's got a lot of like emollient nourishing ingredients and I have been really liking it. It's also massive. This is 0.56 ounces, which is about four times the size of a normal lip balm. It's huge. Like you can see the this on my lip is like the entire lip. And so it has a little bit of that peppermint scent. I don't have a problem with that. And it does a great job of nourishing my skin, of my lips, locking in some hydration, protecting them with those SPF. I wish the SPF was just a bit higher, maybe an SPF 30, um, but I'm very happy with this. I have been reaching this for this more than most lip balms that I use because I like the peppermint scent, especially when I'm wearing a mask. Um, I like the peppermint scent. It nourishes my lips. My lips have been feeling really, really soft and haven't been getting dry or cracking, which is pretty common in the winter time. So I've just been loving it. Um, I'll probably be coming back to it as my go-to lip balm. I might try, I think they have an SPF 30 from Duke Cannon, so I might try that one. Um, but this is gonna last me forever. Most lip balms last me quite some time anyway, and this is four times the size of most lip balms. So I could see this lasting me like one a year, you know? Um, so we'll see, I might have to set it aside to sample some other products and then just kind of come back to it. We'll see how I, how I tackle that. Um, but yeah, I think it was like eight or nine bucks. If you like the peppermint kind of cooling lip balms and you want something with just a bit of SPF, I think this is a really great deal for less than $10, getting literally four lip balms in one. So something to be on the lookout for. I haven't been using it for, oh, I have been using it for more than a month. So um, so yeah, I would absolutely come back to this and you might see it eventually someday in an empties video. Who knows when that would be, but be on the lookout for that. Otherwise, that's the whole AM routine. Seems long, but I did have a lot to talk about. Let me know if you have any thoughts, comments, questions about any of the products you saw in this routine. I'm happy to answer those for you. If you have recommendations on other products to try or what to try next, or if you saw something here that did not work for you and you wanna talk about that, let me know. I love having those skincare conversations, diving into all things AM, PM routines, figuring out what works for us and what doesn't. So. Thank you so much for watching and as always, stay glowing. Bye.